Welcome back. We've just watched a report on pineapple production in Bini and tea cultivation in Burundi. William Bayi, African news journalist, is here to speak more on this report. Good to have you on set. The challenges of agribusiness has been overemphasized. What are we missing out here? Bien, le the report we just watched on the cultivation of pineapples in Benin is a case study on the challenges of organizing a market for agriculture in Africa. It shows us that in order to get involved in agribusiness, the players must be effectively trained to offer quality products. The first point to emphasize is the quality of production because agribusiness is about producing to sell in large quantities in foreign markets. But to sell, it is necessary that what has been produced is sufficient and of good quality. Talking about pineapples from Benin, it is clear that the farmers managed to raise their production to more than 400,000 tons per year. Yet, as we have seen, quality was not taken into consideration. The government had to take steps to save the sector. It would have been a waste of resources, especially for the producers themselves, who would have lost a year of hard work for nothing. The second point I would like to raise with you is the importance of training for agriculture in Africa to be profitable. The stakeholders require skilled staff at all stages. This recall may seem unnecessary, but it is not. You saw in the report that the main problem with exporting pineapples from Benin has been the bad use of ethophone, which is used to enhance the ripening of fruits. It is common to use this type of product in modern intensive agriculture. However, it should be controlled. If not, the product could become poisonous for consumers. And we all know that European markets are very attentive to news about such substances and other fertilizers. I therefore think that the decision of the government of Benin to get involved in quality control will act as a boost to the pineapple industry in the country. And in your opinion, what will be the way forward? What I said earlier about Benin is valid for all African countries relying on agriculture to boost their growth. In many countries, the state supports proactive agricultural policies. Many tracks are explored depending on the context. As we watched in the report on Burundi, the way forward for the tea sector has been privatization. This has helped in boosting the production and has also um, upgraded the work of local producers. The solution can be found, but privatization is not among. Although privatization was necessary in the relaunch of the tea sector, it has not been the case in the coffee sector, which is still struggling to reach the industrialization phase. This is an opportunity for me to highlight the role that the state must play in building an economically prosperous agricultural sector. The state must know how to make the right decisions at the right time. They must know how to privatize at the right time, to make producers' cooperatives accountable when necessary, and especially to take regulatory measures to ensure that production remains means high, as well as good quality for local consumers and for products meant for exportation. Finally, I believe that agriculture in Africa will become a truly profitable business only when its products are completely transformed on the spot. For example, in Ivory Coast, 80% of its production is still exported, unprocessed. William Bahia, thank you so much for your input. Thanks, Afolake. It's my pleasure. A traditional staple meal made from maize or sagam and consumed widely across Africa in different forms, pap is being sold in Nigeria in a labeled convenient pack with a guarantee that it is hygienically prepared and fit for exports. Entrepreneur Ijoma Undukwe has huge plans to take this simple porridge to Nigeria's huge diaspora population. Let's have a look. A factory worker checks the tenderness of maize that has been soaked to be ground into one of Nigerians' most popular breakfasts. This local pub is known as Akamu or Ogi and is prepared and sold as a salt paste. A busy mother of three, Ijoma Ndukwe, said she started Bubeze Fools to cut out the hustle of soaking and milling the maize at home, a process that can take days to achieve the desired taste and consistency. I thought about it, that there were several mothers like me who wanted to give their kids this staple, this traditional meal that we all grew up taking. But, you know, there were busy moms working to support the family and didn't have exactly the time to process the meal for their children. I figured that I could be a bridge between the meal and the mothers. Ndukwe has turned this ordinary cereal 
which she first started selling out of her car to friends for less than $1 in 2012 into a booming business with over 80 vendors across Nigeria. A tube of bubuze pulp sells for $2.50 US dollars. She is also working on a dry option for exports as she tests the market among Nigerians' large diaspora population looking for a taste of home. Exporting, but not in large scale to even meet the demand of this product from outside of the country. But we're exporting to the US and to the UK. And then people travel with the product by themselves to places like Canada, Cyprus, South Africa, Germany, and from many, to many other places as well. Nigeria is going through its worst economic crisis in years due to a fall in global oil prices. Government wants to diversify from oil and is encouraging local business to create wealth and boost employment. Thank you for watching. Send your questions, comments, and suggestions on Twitter at AfolakeG and on Facebook, Afolake Till then, goodbye.